Hi, and uh, welcome to a new problem. This time around, we have a proton, and it uh, it's, has a mass of 1.67 you know, times 10 to the 27 kilograms, times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Uh, and this, this is what happens with the proton. So assume that you uh, shoot the proton with the velocity v um, initial of, well, actually, I'm going to use vi. I have a preference for that. You know, you can use anything as initial, but this is this is v initial, uh, and it's going at um, three point three point uh, zero zero times ten to the uh, five meters uh, per second, and there's a uranium nucleus. So right here, this is five meters. This is a distance of five meters away. And there's some there's a uranium nucleus. So we're just going to show this. Uh, this is a nucleus uranium. Um, and what's happening is as the as the proton comes this way, it's being repelled by the uranium. So there's a force that's repelling that. Uh, there's a force that's repelling that motion by the uranium uh, nucleus, and this force happens to be alpha over x squared, uh, where x stands for the distance between. So, you know, think think about the proton coming this way, and then it doesn't get to the uranium. Uh, assume this is the uranium. And so there's a distance x between them. You know, this is x, and that's what this x stands for. The alpha itself is a constant with its own value. So alpha happens to be 2.12 uh, times 10 to the negative 26 Newton uh, meter squared. And the uranium nucleus is at rest, so it's not moving. Part A of the problem uh, wants us to find the speed of the proton when x is 8.2. Zero, 0 times uh, 10 to the negative 10 meters. Uh, so this is this is how it's laid out. You know, this is the proton. It's coming this way. The uranium is at a distance of uh, 5 meters. So this point, x, I'm going to call it maybe x1, is 5 meters. And then this gap here, x, is 8.0 uh, uh, zero, 0, times 10 to the negative 10 uh, meters. So, assume, uh, so what's the speed? We want to know the speed of the, the proton when the nucleus is at that, that distance from the, when the proton is at that distance from the uh, nucleus of the uranium. Uh, remember, there's a force that's pushing this way from the uranium, um, and the force is given by that function right there. So I'm going to continue in the next page uh, where, you know, just having a simple diagram, you know, you have the uranium, this point here, I'm calling it x equals to uh, 8.00 times 10 to the negative 10 uh, meters. Uh, and then the uranium is at x I'll say x1 equals to 5 meters. Uh, remember, work, if the force is constant, it's force times displacement. But the same work, if the force is a variable, uh, it becomes uh, f times uh, dx. That's a variable. The question is, why do we need to know uh, the work involved by the force? So the force is the force from the nucleus of the uranium. F, it's a variable force, and it's working against the motion of the proton. It's a variable force, it's working against the motion of the proton, and therefore there is energy expended. Okay, so there is some energy involved. So we can use the work energy theorem, which says that work is the same as change in kinetic energy. Um, 
so if you do the integral the limits the limits of integration will be from uh, from uh, so this is this is we want to find you know what's the um, uh, what's the speed when the gap the gap between the uranium and the proton is 8.00 times 10 10 to the negative 10 you know that's what we want to find out uh, if this point right here is the starting point, so it means in your limits of integration, your base is going to be 5 meters. And then our stopping point will be uh, 8 times 8.00 times 10 to the negative 10. Uh, don't forget the force itself, which happens to be uh, alpha over x squared, and then dx. That happens to be the final uh, velocity minus the initial final uh, one half mv squared, the uh, one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. That represents the change in kinetic energy. Uh, so we are interested in finding the final velocity you know, before it stops. We know what the initial velocity is, if you can recall from this point the initial velocity is 3.00 times uh, 10 to the 5 and so if you go back here uh, we can do our integration and uh, it becomes alpha times x to the negative 2 uh, our limits are 5.00 8.00 zero zero times 10 to the negative 10 um, and then times dx like that uh, and this is equals to uh, one half m we can pull the one half m outside and we're left with v final squared minus uh, v initial uh, squared our target is to get our target is to get uh, v final squared and so at this point, uh, we could do the integral. Uh, if you do the integral, you end up getting negative negative alpha um, over x. Why is it alpha over x? Because think about this. If this is negative 2, if you want to do the integral, you do negative 2 plus 1, and that gives us x to the negative 1. Um, over negative one you know this is just like a side note to show you how you end up with this as an integral um, and then you put the limits of integration 0.5 and up until 8 uh, times 10 to the negative 10 uh, that result will be divided by one half m and then uh, we end up with v final squared minus v initial squared. Our goal is to get v final squared. So v final squared becomes equal to negative alpha over x, the integral from 5 uh, to 8 times 10 to the negative 10. I could still put the units just because it's physics. Units make such a big deal, so don't forget that. Um, and then over 0.5m this v initial uh, squared comes to this side so we have a plus v initial uh, squared just going to move to the next page go back and see what those values are so we get a v final squared equals to if i look at the, the other page um, alpha so we have alpha remember alpha is if I go back what's the value of alpha that's the value of alpha 2.12 times 10 to the negative 26 newton meter squared so 2.12 times 10 to the negative 26 newton per meter squared that's the value of alpha and then we also have x um, now x is where you're going to plug in the numbers you know we have the value of x and so 
the the top limit the top limit is 8 times 10 to the negative 10 meters minus another alpha times 10 to the negative 26 Newton meter squared the bottom limit is 5 okay so we're done with this part this is the upper part right here we're done with that part this one right here and all of that is divided by 0 0.5 and the mass which is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 okay 1. Uh, 6, 7 times 10 to the negative 27. And that's given in kilograms. So don't forget the units again, uh, kilograms. And then plus, if you can see, we had plus the initial velocity squared, you know, plus the initial velocity squared. But at this point, we can plug in the numbers. So we have to go back and check what the initial velocity is. Uh, that's at the beginning where we had the initial velocity being equivalent to 3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So 3, three times 10 to the 5 uh, meters per second. This whole thing is our V final uh, squared. But we wanted to get the V squared. So we wanted to get the V final by itself. So that means... Um, we can ignore that, the square itself, we can ignore the square itself, as long as you remember to put the square root sign over all of, all of that, okay? So it's a whole process in trying to solve the problem. Uh, one of the things you wanna, uh, that's gonna come out is that this numerator is gonna be a negative number. You know, when you do the math, you'll find that the numerator right here uh, will be a negative number. And that's understandable because this second part of the problem um, is divided by a bigger number. Okay, uh, so you get a bigger number on the right than on the left. Uh, so, you know, negative, negative 2.12, we had a negative number, so don't forget that. Uh, this one right here is a negative number. So we have to come back and put a negative right there. So there's a negative right here. Okay. And then you're subtracting it from another negative number. So a negative and a negative uh, is going to be what? It's going to be positive, right? You know, you're subtracting from a negative number. Um, you're plugging in those values 8 times 10 to the negative 10 and also um, uh, 5. So we have negative alpha minus another negative alpha. So this is going to eventually be a plus if you do the algebra. Uh, and, then, and then we also have 0 0.5 times the mass. Uh, this one, this value is squared. Okay, that value is squared because if you go back to this page, you can see that we have a V initial uh, uh, squared right there. So we have all our values all right if you do the math you get 2.41 uh, uh, times 10 to the 5 uh, meters per second so that's the velocity that's the speed uh, of the proton when it is 8 times 10 to the negative 10 meters from the nucleus in part b in part b they're asking uh, as the proton approaches the nucleus like that there's a repulsive force. So let's assume this is the uranium and this is the proton and this is the force involved. It's re repelling it um, and it slows down the proton, uh, proton un until the final velocity uh, is zero meters per second. So it's going to stop a little bit and it comes to rest. Uh, after which once it slows down and close to a stop, it doesn't get all the way up until uh, the location of the proton. So if you think about this, you know, it's 
um, coming in this way and it's being stopped at some point, not exactly where the nucleus is, so there's still a gap of X, okay? So we wanna find how close is that to the, uh, uh, to the nucleus of the proton itself. Uh, the force is doing some work, it's still doing some work. Remember, work equals to force times distance if it's a constant force, and then work equals to integral of force uh, times dx if it's a variable force uh, but this is also the same as change in kinetic energy which is uh, one half mv final squared minus one half mv uh, initial squared but in this example remember the final velocity right here uh, is going to be zero and so this whole part is zero you could do the integral there uh, as you can recall from the previous uh, section we have alpha over x squared dx being equivalent to negative one-half mv initial uh, squared. Um, we do the, have the initial velocity. If you do the integral at this point, you get negative alpha over x equals to negative one-half uh, mv uh, initial squared. We want to solve for x. And so uh, when you flip things up, the minuses cancel out. Uh, you flip x, you get x over alpha equals to 2 of our mv initial squared um, and so that means that your x equals to 2 alpha um, mv initial squared like we've always mentioned uh, you want to keep you want to keep i'm just going to complete the problem in the next section so x is 2 alpha over mv initial squared um, x equals to 2 alpha of our mv initial squared uh, I always, it's always a good habit to keep your variables up until the end. Remember, alpha is 2.12 times 10 to the negative 26 Newton meter squared. Uh, all of the mass, the mass happens to be 1.6. Uh, 1.6 times, actually is 1.67. If I go back, you see the mass is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. And so that's what we have right there, 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Uh, also, we have to plug in the velocity, the initial velocity you can see from the beginning. Uh, slide 1 is 3.00 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So 3.00 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. That's going to help you uh, solve for m. And it, it comes uh, round, rounds out to about 2.8 uh, times... Um, 10 to the 2.82 times 10 to the uh, negative 10 meters. Okay, so that's the distance it stops. So, you, you know, think about the proton coming this way. Um, and then there is a force coming from the uranium that's pushing it that way. Uh, so the proton doesn't get all the way up until the nucleus this is the nucleus it doesn't get there there's a distance x so we want to find out what that distance is uh, we know the force produces some type of energy and that's why in the previous slide you can see there's a relationship between the work done by the force and the change in kinetic energy the final velocity is zero uh, it gives us a relationship where we still need to find the integral uh, we find the integral there's a negative here, we simplify the problem, and so we have we end up getting the value uh, uh, the value of um, of uh, um, the, uh, this is the value of the the distance where it stops. Okay. So interestingly, if you go to the next slide, you see that it's gonna stop at a distance where x happens to be. 2.82 uh, times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So it doesn't go all the way up until uh, x. So this is like a certain x, and this is x1. x1 happens to be 5 meters. So there's a gap. There's a gap right there. Okay? So we want to find, you know, what the velocity, what the velocity of the proton is. Uh, what's the speed when it goes 
5 meters away. So this distance is 5 meters. Um, and this gap x, which is saying how close does it get to? So it gets to a distance of x, which is that. So we want to find what's the velocity, what's the speed when it's again 5 meters away. So final velocity at this point, which is 5 meters away. Remember the work energy theorem says that it's going to start at 2.82 times 10 to the negative 10 meters and end up at 5, uh, 5 meters. Uh, but even though it ends up at 5.00 meters, we still have to do the integral um, alpha of uh, x squared and equate that to the change in kinetic energy. The change in kinetic energy is 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. And you can recall that the initial velocity uh, when it stops. So when it stops right here, when it stops right here, the v initial, when it stops, happens to be uh, 0 meters per second. That's the initial velocity when it stops. So this whole thing will be 0. We just need to find the integral. Uh, when we do that, we get negative alpha over x. The limits of integration are 2.2, uh, sorry, 2.82, not 2.8. 2.82 times 10 to the negative 10 meters up until 5.00 meters and that gives us uh, equals to negative one half or rather not negative one half but just one half mv final squared uh, so I'm going to simplify oh no I need to erase that um, so you know these problems can be uh, long and tedious sometimes because of the algebra but you just gotta be patient uh, v final squared so imagine you're gonna divide both sides by uh, one half m and that helps us get the value of v final uh, is the square root of negative alpha over x the integral from 2.82 times 10 to the negative 10 meters up until uh, 5.00 uh, zero, zero meters uh, that has to be divided by um, 0 0.5 m remember m is the the mass of the proton which happens to be 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 so we have to be very careful about the uh, units okay so always keep track of all the units um, so this one becomes radical if we plug in the numbers we get negative alpha alpha is 2.12 times 10 to the negative 26 newton meter squared that's the top part of uh, 5.00 meters you know, that's the initial plug-in. And then you subtract another negative. If you subtract another negative, it becomes uh, negative. I'm just going to write that one here. Negative 2.12 times 10 to the negative 26 Newton uh, meter squared. That's the other limit. Uh, we have two negatives now. And then you also have this x, which is 2.82 over 2.8. Uh, 82 times 10 to the negative 10. That whole result at the top has to be divided by has to be divided by 0 0.5 times the um, mass of the object. If you can go back, mass of the proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms uh, times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Like that remember the radical sign goes all the way so you got to be very careful if you solve that problem you get that the final uh, final velocity which I'm gonna put right here in the middle well, actually I don't have to put that in the middle I can uh, just change this radical sign a little bit to give it some space uh, it becomes uh, V final equals to approximately 
point um, three point zero zero times ten to the five uh, meters per second. That's your final answer. So this is the final velocity when the proton has been pushed back. Okay, so remember it stopped somewhere like right here, a little bit, and then it was pushed back all the way to the beginning, which is five meters away. That's why we have five meters right there. It started at 2.82 times 10 to the negative 10. Uh, tedious problem, it's a long problem. So you want to take your time at the beginning. We started off with a proton that's uh, going towards the, this nucleus, and we wanted to find uh, the uh, velocity of that proton. Uh, we had certain constants from the force, so this will, will give in a force that's opposing that motion. And so we used uh, a work energy theorem. Remember, it's a variable force. And so the, the work itself is equivalent to change in kinetic energy. And so the uh, because the work is a variable force, we have to do the integral. And if you do the integral, you end up with um, a specific value. You have to solve for uh, you have to solve for for the initial. Uh, you have to solve for the final velocity. So to solve for the final velocity, you notice that the v initial moves to the other side. It moves to the left right there, uh, and so you have a new way of writing the problem. It's, you know, you can take any kind of approach you want at this point, but it's always a good habit to solve for the variable you're looking for and then wait up until the end. You know, if you if you see right here, uh, you wait up until the end to get the V final. So you just plug in the numbers and then get the V final. So after you get the V final for that, the next part of the problem was you know, what's, what's the distance between the uranium nucleus and the proton once it stops? So when it stops, it means that your V final uh, is going to be zero. This V final right here is going to be zero. And so this part of the problem is eliminated. You don't have to deal with it. It's gone. You're only left with this part of the problem, one half MV, MV initial squared, the initial kinetic energy. Uh, this is the work done by the variable force. We need an integral there with respect to dx. And so you compare the two values. And again, in the same uh, light, you solve for x. And that's what we have. And then in the next slide, you can see once you solve for x, you plug in the numbers, you get that position 2.82 times 10 to the negative 10. So I hope it makes sense how uh, we process this problem. Uh, just take your time to look at each and every single step. Uh, the the math is actually heavier than the physics itself. The physics is just about uh, a force versus uh, you know work done by the force repelling the proton against the uranium nucleus, and then you have specific points of displacements which are critical to computing the integral uh, um, uh, of the force, and that gives you the work. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the video. Feel free to send any questions. And looking forward to the next problem. Um, uh, uh, have a great day. Okay, bye.